with the tank removal, remove the cows. There's just a one bolt in on the back of the radiator bracket. That bolt holds the tank down and the plastic clip here. Then you should be able to feel that it's, it wants to lift. The next thing you want to do, turn your fuel off. And I might just grab another rag. And you want to remove the clip. And just slide it. Slide it off. I'm going to drain some into the up. Okay. There wasn't much in there. It's all right. What do you do? So no for more fuel. Let's do that. Just leave a rag on it. And the same for the other one. Now I'm gonna lift the tank. And I need to find a place for the tank. Um, I've got some bubble wrap. I'll put some on that. Here we go. Cardboard box. So you don't want to break anything. There we go. Straight off. Need to drain your tank. Here's just a, a little tip. Shit! Don't spill it. I was draining through the pet cock, but once you get to a certain level of fuel when there's just not enough it just won't drain so you're going to end up tipping it upside down to, to get the last probably 100 mil 200 mils of fuel this is the world's first electric drz in current form <laughs> there you go here's the tank it actually looks pretty cool the plastics that sits interesting. Oh, I know why it's off. I'm gonna have to take the horn off, damn it. The horn has to be relocated. Okay, next step take off the brackets of the existing tank.
test fit with the brackets on. OEM fixings. Now just an update with what I've done, you had to get the bike to a test fit stage, few issues with the existing radiator guards. On the left hand side of the radiator guard, this bracket hinders the placement of the tank, so that has to come off. Um, so if you fit this Acebus uh, tank, you're going to have to remove, remove that bracket. Um, we'll get away with leaving the radiator guard on, just the bracket has to come off. The other issue is you have to replace the horn and I found a position for that which we have to drill a hole in the bracket on the other side here and we'll I'll do that in a minute. So the seat fits, um, the lights, LEDs are on but I've had to order a Suzuki front and rear indicator kit because off the V-Strom the, the the bullet cables that connect to the, the, the female sockets on the front, they were wrong um, and they were different on this compared to the V-Strom. On the rear, the cables were too short, but they were the right male, the right male plugs to go in the female and they are, t you need 20 centimetre long connector cables to connect to there, so they've been ordered. Um, the front fender has been found, it was lost in the post, that will come today, so that's going to be incorporated in the next video, so we're going to modernise the front fender, and the, the other issue that I think will be the front cows trying to get them on to connect to the radiator so those two the three bolts and that'll tie it in um, and next year I've got to put the pets pet what are your pet cock valves on both sides and have the dual system running so but there we go that's that's where we're up to it's ticking along it looks pretty good the placement of the horn will sit up in this location, just reverse it. So you eyeball the bolt, mark the dot, drill the hole through here, take the bracket off of, of course, and it will be sitting in that area and it's the gap between in the tank. Um, so I'll show you once the tank's back on, but yeah, drill a hole and we'll be able to fix the horn in here, reconnect the cable to there like that. Now that's the horn on. I'll retest the fitment of the tank. Now you can't see from that angle at the moment. But we've got to make sure it does it. Major hurdle is going to be getting the bolt in. So that's another issue. Even though we replaced the horn. We'll see.
This is gonna be interesting. Do it the old fashioned way. Don't over tighten them. Don't know what the water hurt you're going to get in if you do it over tight. If you split it, it'll rip all the bolt out. It's game over for your fuel tank. Okay, we're 